Hi friends! Today is gonna be a little bit of a reading vlog. Y'all, I have never read a Brandon Sanderson book. I've had Brando Sando on the back burner for a long time because a lot of my friends do enjoy his books, but I've never gotten around to them because I don't physically own any of them. I got a bunch of books that I need to read already. Like it was just, it was in here, but it wasn't in the forefront of my mind. Then came this Kickstarter. I don't need to tell you about it because if you're on the internet, you've already heard, but I will link Sanderson's video in the description box down below for you if you, for some reason, don't know. But essentially, like this is a huge movement in publishing. I mean, yes, he's on a level that most of us will never attain, but it's still a very interesting part of publishing history. And I would like to be a part of that. Not that he needs my dollar bills, but like, I don't want to feel left out. There's a lot of FOMO going on right now, okay? So my concern has been that because I've never read a Sanderson, I don't know if I like his writing style, and therefore, do I spend my money on supporting the Kickstarter and getting books that I may potentially never like? Now, that being said, even if I like him, I may not like the books. But like right now, I have zero clue zero clue. So I decided that it was time to read a Sanderson. And when deciding where to start, because if you don't know, he got a lot of books, I went to my friend Bex, aka Becca C. Smith, who's an author tuber, and I will link in the description box down below for you. Um, and I asked Bex where she suggested that I start. That being said, there are a lot of different suggestions on the internet from readers and from Sanderson himself. Again, he has a video about um, his suggested reading order and I'll link that down below for you as well if you're curious to know what Sanderson thinks about his own writing. But I wanted to know a suggestion based off of someone who knows me and understood that I was going into this wanting to know, do I like his writing at all? And you know, Bex came through with the perfect suggestion. She suggested Steelheart. She suggested that I start at Steelheart and in her words, it was a normal sized popcorn book of 386 pages, but it'll let you know if you even like Sanderson's writing style. Which to be fair, is exactly what I wanted to know. That was definitely what I was most concerned about was do I, am I going to like his writing style at all? Now, those of you who have been around, you know that my friends and I occasionally have a completely different viewpoint in writing styles. Um, Kate and Becca love N.K. Jemisin and it is just not a writing style for me. Um, at least not the Broken Earth trilogy is the only one that I've tried so far. Not my jam. Love like the context and the ideas and the themes, but the writing style is not for me. It's a preference thing. So I was concerned that even though my friends really love Sanderson, will I love Sanderson? Steelheart is set in an alternate future, or it could be the real future, I don't know, because your girl is not a psychic. But there are empowered humans who are essentially always evil, and we're following an 18-year-old boy who really wants to help take down these empowered humans and bring life back to somewhat of a normalcy. So that's where we are. I bought the book on Audible because it's an Audible original, so that's the only place you could get the audiobook. And I'm going to start diving into Sanderson and see if it's something that I enjoy. So wish me luck. We'll see how I feel. Well, for you, very soon. Let's talk Sanderson. It is now Sunday the 13th. Sunday the 13th. So I started reading this on Friday morning. Yeah. And so I listened to it Friday morning while I was getting ready for work, um, a little bit on my lunch break on the way home from work. And then during my live sprints on YouTube, <laughs> so I did two 45 minute sprints and listened to Steelheart bur Burring? During both sprints. That's how English works. So I am currently at 40% of this book. I am having a great time. For me, everything so far has just been very 
entertaining, it's very quick moving, there is like information about the like the new world and the way things are working, but it seems like everything was put in with a purpose and it all makes sense. I haven't ran into anything yet where I've been like, what the crap is he talking about? So I've been having a good time. I think the world building's done really well. I like the story structure. I like Sanderson's writing style, which was what I was honestly most worried about, um, just because middle-aged white dudes and I don't typically get along writing style-wise, but I'm fairly happy with the way things are going. So I do plan to continue reading on today, probably gonna listen to some more of the audiobook while I do laundry and clean up my office. So I definitely have a lot of that to do, but I, so far I am enjoying the story. I don't want to do any spoilers or anything, but I think it has an, it has a prologue, but the prologue is set in the past. And like, you see the beginning of why this character is the way that he is. And I think it makes perfect sense. Now it could have been done as a flashback later on. There's like a specific part where it could have been put in as a flashback rather than being part of the epilogue. But I think, or prologue rather, not part of the epilogue, crazy person, part of the prologue. But I think it makes more sense for the prologue because it helps you get into the character's mindset, into why the character is doing the things that he's doing in the next few uh, chapters, but also gives you some setup of the world and kind of how at that point the world was different, but it wasn't as different as it is in the present day of the story. So it actually gives us kind of a bridge between where we are now in the world and where they are when the actual story is taking place. So this prologue is actually kind of like a bridge point. Um, so I think as far as like prologues go, it was very well used. And I think that, you know, those people who skip prologues are gonna be really sad that they skipped a prologue because they're not gonna have any clue what's happening. So Kate, I hope you read the prologue. But I'm having a good time so far and I am definitely interested in where things are at. I ended off on like a very high tense moment and I'm very excited to see where things go from here. Uh, and just try to figure out how things are going to happen. What's happening? What's going to happen in the world? How many different ways can you say the word happen? A lot, apparently. So I'm going to get back to reading and I will let you know either when I have another update or when I'm finished. It's been a time warp again. That's not how the song goes, but it sounded good for the moment. Uh, it is now... June 4th? 5th. June 5th. I don't even know what day it is. I think today is somebody's birthday. Whose birthday did I forget? It is June 5th and I started reading this book on March 11th and I finished it on March 23rd but if you've been here for any of the other The Lost Months vlogs, you'll know my life was fucked up. I was like, it's fine. I'll just film an ending for this. I'll just read through my notes and film an ending. Okay, you want to know what my notes say? You want to know what I wrote on my Goodreads view? My Goodreads view says, this was my first Sanderson. And while I wish I'd read it at a point in my life where I was actually enjoying books, I'm glad I was still able to get to it. That's my whole review. That was helpful. I appreciate that, Jessica. Thank you so much for making that blatantly obvious. Um, I gave this a four, it might be a 3.75. Yeah, a 3.75 out of five stars. I did really enjoy it. There was a plot twist at the end uh, involving one of our main characters. Actually, there were a couple plot twists at the end involving a couple of our main characters that I kind of had a suspicion of, but was very happy to see them as part of the book. Um, there was a character death that I was just not prepared for. And overall, I really enjoyed this story. I liked um, where things kind of ended. I'm interested to see how things go from where we are. I definitely want to pick up the second book at some point, um, though I haven't. Well, I want to say I haven't really been reading, but I did read 10 books in 10 days. So I haven't picked anything up since then, though, and it's been like a week and I've not really read anything. So I just like burnt myself out reading 10 books in 10 days, but it's fine. I do think if I had read this, um, not when I read it, I probably would have rated it a little higher, but just at the nature of my rating scale because it has so much to do with enjoyment and um, pacing and things. Possibly could have been higher at a not terrible time in my life. That is one reason why I say like, uh, I'll always give like an author a second chance because sometimes the book that you're reading has more to do with you and the mood that you're in and the, you know, what you're dealing with 
in your exterior life than about the book itself. Um, that's why I'll oftentimes, you know, if I rate a book a perfect 5.25, I'll say it's an emotional 5.25 or it's a, you know, it's based off of just, just all vibes. I think that also can play a large part in it. I did really enjoy it. I do plan to continue reading the series at some point. I don't know how soon I'll get to it, but it is something that I do want to read. And I do want to move into Sanderson's more high fantasy stuff um, and not just his, I'm going to assume this is sci-fi, it's fantasy, but is it? Because they got their powers from a ball of something in the sky and that's got to deal with the, I don't know, it's, it's science fantasy maybe but yeah I definitely want to read some of his high, high fantasy as well but I think this was a good place to start I think Becca was right it definitely was um like an entertaining popcorn sized book that I think um definitely gave me you know the idea of if I liked his writing style which was the entire purpose of this experiment again I'm sorry that like this video that I expected to be so great like reading Sanderson for the first time like when you get something like that and you think it's gonna be like this fantastic video idea and then life and I didn't want to just scrap the whole video because I had been looking forward to it and there was just so many things going into it it definitely could have been better but we're living with what we got now. So that's going to be it for me today. I post reading, writing, book, and planner related videos a couple of times a week. If you don't want to miss anything I have going on in the future, make sure you hit the subscribe button and the notification bell down below. And until then, I will see you guys next time. Bye!